Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, since we've got uh, Octoprint all set up with the Fabricator Mini, let's go ahead and print something. That's about the only thing we haven't uh, done yet. So, again, you might remember in the prior videos we've looked at um, the control screen so we can see that uh, we can see the Fabricator Mini through the web camera here. Here's the hot end. Uh, it's all homed and everything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load and slice a file. So what we're going to do is scroll down. Now what you may uh, notice is that the upload button is below the fold. Now this also does drag and drop. So we could go uh, open, open a file and say, for example, we have um, this file we want to print. And we can just drag it over. We can drop it and boom. Or we can say upload and the similar happens where we can go and we can um, uh, find it, print files, and do the same thing. And you see here it pops up. So we've talked about this menu a little bit in the past. So we have Cura Engine is our only slicer. And we talked in the prior videos about the different profiles. So we have three profiles. Um, uh, with varying levels of support. So what we're going to print doesn't require any support. So we're going to take the uh, S0 configuration. The profile we're going to take for the printer is the Fabricator Mini. It's the only one we have connected. Uh, we obviously have this uh, adjustable tripod phone mount that we downloaded from Thingiverse. Now, after slicing, we have a couple different choices. We can do nothing. We can just simply slice it. We can select it for printing and we can tell it to start printing upon completion. So what we're going to do is we're going to select start printing and then we're going to click slice and then down here you'll notice that it's slicing. And the one thing I got to tell you on this Raspberry Pi with the quad core, uh, it slices pretty darn fast. So now it's uh, thrown it into queue for slicing and what I'm going to do is jump over here and take a look at the temperature readings. So one of the things we can see as the temperature scale moves out is uh, uh, the uh, top line here, the lighter red is the target temperature which is 205 degrees C and then you can see over here that the Fabricator Mini's hot end is ramping up. Now the one thing I got to share with you is the Fabricator Mini heats up crazy fast as far as the hot end goes. Uh, most of my other printers will take several minutes to come up to temperature. Um, you know, three, four, even five, depending upon the temperature. However, this one just, as you can see, really ramps up uh, to the temperature. So as this, because we've obviously have it set to wait to come to temperature before I start printing. So let's go back over and take a look at the control plane or not control plane, the um, control view where we're watching the head. So um, as it's coming up to temperature, now settling back down, uh, we should start to see the head begin moving. So you can see the board in here blinking. So as it's receiving, there we go. So it's uh, waking up. It's going to do its home routine. And so now we're going to do a Z, a Z test on the the home and now it's going to raise up you can see I have blue painters tape I'm going to be doing PLA in this case and uh, there goes the head so what we'll do is uh, we'll do a time-lapse video of this and, and I'm not gonna make you sit through the whole thing and wait however you get a good idea now how uh, to launch a job so you can either drag and drop it on the screen or you can use the upload uh, button to start it and again once this finishes um, you know it'll just go back to its home position and leave it set so uh, again kind of neat and uh, you know the interesting thing is you can sit here and watch this and also uh, this will work from a tablet etc um, you know now remember it is getting wherever you have the file 
at you know it has to be able to be seen by the host computer you're at because it's actually accessing that through the web browser so if you're on a tablet remotely that that's going to be a little bit different story of how you access your file so just kind of keep that in mind however the neat part about this is you could now log into this from a tablet and walk around the house and keep an eye on on the printer as it's doing different things and you know making sure the printer's going uh, correctly you know because that's the one big thing that I hate is uh, you go through especially a long print you get an hour or so into maybe a four hour print and something goes wrong and you know you come back expecting it to be done and right and you got this big glob of mess and so this provides a nice way whether it be on your cell phone um, you know a tablet etc for you to actually watch what's going on on your 3d printer so anyway so we're gonna let this go um, and finish its printing this this particular uh, item I'm printing here will take about an hour to print um, yes I think okay so total time is approximately an hour and 35 minutes so we're gonna let it go ahead and print out and then uh, we'll come back we'll watch a time-lapse and then after the time-lapse is finished then I'll actually show the part in the setup and everything and we'll talk a little bit about it and you can kind of see from start to finish now um, with Octoprint, you know, we now have a fully remote printer setup, which is really cool. So, anyways, uh, let's go to the time lapse. We'll watch that and then, um, you know, stay on the channel because after the time lapse is finished, we'll come on, take a look at the actual finish of the piece, and talk a little bit more about the setup uh, to close out the video. Now for a time lapse video. Ready, set, let's go. Okay, welcome back. So we took a look at the time lapse of this uh, as we we printed this uh, coming out of the you know sending it via Octoprint uh, to be printed. And, and actually, this piece looks pretty darn good. And so the video that the time lapse was actually based upon Z movement. And so uh, you can kind of see how that that works versus. Uh, uh, you know your standard just uh, every so many seconds or you know time-lapse video so what should appear is again it's building up so it's pretty cool so anyways um, this this is our current octoprint setup now I am going to be building a case to place this in the base of here uh, so watch for that coming up very shortly um, and I'm probably going to build a fan housing onto the back side of this too and power it by a wall wart. So a lot of stuff coming with regards to this. And, and uh, again, I'm going to do more on the Octoprint too. So after this, I think I'm going to do one on time lapse videos, how to set up and do time lapse videos um, in Octoprint, and then you know move on to some more advanced topics. So uh, I'm about finished with the the basic series. Again, I'm going to do a basic on uh, on on time lapse and maybe a couple other things maybe two three more basic videos and then I'm gonna start moving to the intermediate videos and then obviously to the advanced after that so if you have something you'd like to see about Octoprint let me know below and I'll see if I can't work it into a video if you have specific questions about Octoprint let me know below really having a good time with this uh, far more than I thought and uh, having some good conversation out there too on some of the videos so Again, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them below. I'll be happy to answer them. If there are specific things, again, that you'd like to see with Octoprint, again, let me know below. Or there are ideas that you have in general you'd like to see about 3D production, again, please share them. And uh, again, remember, like, subscribe, and see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.